Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? One, two, three, test, test, one, two, three. Yes. Thumbs up. We're good. Off to the races. I look good. Okay. We know who this guy is. This gentleman? I'm in your room. I'm the person who's in your room every night, and you don't even have to open the door for me. I'm right there. <laughs> by now, you probably know the spiel already, right? Yeah, exactly. I've been told by parents of smaller children that this is a great sleeping aid. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but in a very, in a, in a very cute way. Like the, my kids keep watching this over and over again. It's great. We love it. <laughs> no, but seriously, every time since we launched this video, and we've only we've updated it last year actually. So um, since I have aged, obviously. Uh, we, we wanted to make sure it's true to the reality. Uh, but in essence, it's still very much the same, and it's been a huge success because it really gives a very brief, very quick overview of Aqualina and everything that we have to offer. And um, with you being here now for a few days, I think you may have been able to experience a few of the things by now, a few of the wonderful amenities. Maybe some of you have been able to make it to the spa, which is always a great treat. I see two thumbs up over there. Very nice. Excellent. If you have not yet, please do so. It's certainly worth the visit. And of course, the beautiful pool and beach area as well, the great outdoors now with the sun and the time change. Um, it's nice to get up early in the morning, just walk the beach a little bit, see the sunrise, and it's just a be beautiful place here. Um, and I've been able and fortunate to be able to be here for over eight years now. Um, and uh, yeah, I, uh, that was never the plan, but just <laughs> somehow, you know, one year and the next and the next. And um, it's just a very, a very comfortable place. And, and people always ask, you know, why do, why do people come to Aqualina? And yes, we do have great accommodation, we have beautiful views, we have all of these wonderful amenities. But in my opinion, that's not why people come to Aqualina. I think people come to Aqualina because of the people that are here at Aqualina. Mm -hmm. and I think that makes all the difference. And that's something that's very important, especially in the travel industry, um, is the, the human uh, component, the human interaction. In a day of age where uh, there's so much technology, we're surrounded by it constantly, there's information overload, right? We're getting inundated, uh, whether it's Twitter, whether it's uh, Snapchat, Instagram, you name it, the news, there's constantly noise all the way around. And sometimes people just want to escape and get away from all that noise. And, and, and I, I used to work in, uh, in Washington, D.C., so I know what it's like to be very close to the politics and all. Um, but when you come here, people ask you the most pressing questions, which is, what's the weather like tomorrow? <laughs> or what's the temperature of the pool? Or you know, what's the ocean like today? Those are like the, the hot, hard-hitting questions that we are facing here at Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a whole different atmosphere. People want to get away from everything. That's why they come here. And, um, and I usually ask the question, uh, what does luxury mean to people, right? What does luxury mean to you? So let me ask the question right now. Um, what does luxury mean to you? Anyone? Uh, doing what I want, when I want, how I want. You just killed my speech. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, customer service. Customer service, yes. What else? What does luxury mean? Comfort. Comfort. Mm -hmm. Yes. Consistency. Consistency. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. Luxury can mean all of these things. And, and you said it best. Luxury is really, uh, it's, it's whatever it is that you want. Mm -hmm. It's not what we think is luxury. Mm -hmm. There's luxury properties out there um, that are luxury because of their furnishings, because of the level of service they provide. But what is luxurious to you may not be luxurious to you. Each and us are very unique in their things that we love to do. And when you have an hour to yourself, maybe some people do the same things, but probably everybody does something else. Mm -hmm. And especially when you have a day, two, three, or a vacation to yourself, you want to experience it the way you want to experience it. And that's really the truth. Uh, so we can't provide service that we think is great. We need to provide service that you think is great. And how do we best do that? I'm sure everybody in this room had to uh, buy a birthday present at some point in time for someone, right? Mm -hmm. um, have you ever had to buy a birthday present for someone that you don't know? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that easy or difficult? difficult? Why is it so difficult? Because you don't know the person. So what are you going to get them? You don't know. Well, it's the exact same format for guests that are coming to a resort. If we don't know them, we can only guess, hope, think that anything that we do will be great for them. But we have no idea. We don't know. Now, this is where you come in as the travel intermediaries, as somebody that has the first contact with the client before we do, mm -hmm. because you really get to know them first, and you listen to them, right? You hear them. You try to understand what it is that they're looking for, and then you go and try to find that experience for them, that perfect match, that perfect property based on what you know. 
And then you have two options. You can either just book it with us, and that's that, or you can actually communicate all of the things that you have learned from your client to the property. And the latter is what in turn really sets up Aqualina for success. And that helps us not just to service your guest, but to make sure that they're happy, which in turn makes you very happy. Because they will come back and give you the two thumbs up that, thank you so much for sending me to Aqualina, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> but if we don't know their dietary preferences, we don't know what floor they like to be on, we don't know what views they, uh, they enjoy, we don't know that you know, they may have things that are not necessarily uh, important or seemingly important, but by knowing them, we can capitalize on it and create what we refer to as wow stories or wow moments. And I know Mauro has touched on that a little bit already. Uh, there is countless and countless of these wow stories out there. And over the course of time, we've really worked to try to capture them and also share them within the team to kind of um, encourage everyone to fall on the same path and to illustrate how much importance you have as an individual on someone else's life, really, right? How many times do we take vacations a year? Very few times. I mean, we're lucky in the travel industry because we get to travel because it's part of our job. But the average household goes on vacation maybe twice a year, and that's a lot for some. So that's your special time. That's the time when you save up all your hard-earned pennies, and now you really want to take your family and you want to have something amazing, something that you can think back of for years and years and years. And we all do, right? We've all been to places where we still remember certain things that happened there, or people that have maybe touched our lives. It could be in a just very small and um, in different way, but it just lingers with us and it resonates. And that type of information is so crucial to make sure that you communicate that information, not just learn it, but to actually pass it on. Um, everyone always says knowledge is power. And I always say I disagree. And then they look at me like, oh, why? Because I think knowledge in itself, without it being applied, is absolutely useless. Mm -hmm. It's the application of knowledge. That's the true power. It's doing something with what you have, not just holding on to it. If I know this about a person, all of these wonderful things, but I don't tell anyone about it, nothing happens. Nothing will change. But if I do, if I share it, and now these, uh, these people are, in this case, the team members, they're thinking, oh, you know, it's their birthday, it's their anniversary. I mean, those are like, for us, the low-hanging fruit. Those are the things where it's already, okay, birthday, we do this, anniversary, this is the easiest pie. But let's get to the next level. What's something more challenging, right? So we've, we've tasked our team to look for these gold nuggets. We call it gold nuggets. Things that are randomly happening in a conversation that somebody just mentions in passing, and you pick up that gold nugget, and now you make something out of it. Let's say somebody could have a conversation with you and said, yeah, you know, I usually really like to get up and do yoga, but I haven't had any time to do it because I've been working so much, because I'm working on this big project, and it's all about this and this and this and this and this and this. So you either just think, okay, well, you know, you're busy, you work, whatever, or you're thinking, huh, okay, so you like to do yoga, but you didn't have the time to do it yet. Hmm, let's see what we can do about that. Maybe we can arrange a yoga instructor to knock on your door tomorrow at 6 a.m. and whisk you out of the bed and take you up to the beach and do a beautiful sunrise yoga session. Now you're going to say what? Wow. wow. <laughs> right? Because you didn't expect that to happen. And those are some of the things that we've done over the course of time that have just really, really hit home. And we have been able to um, pull this invisible little string around someone's heart and just kind of tie it back to Aqualina to a point where people start sending us pictures of their family, pictures of their kids growing up, pictures of their family reunions, pictures of their daily lives. Like they feel so connected emotionally to a property that they want us to be included in their lives. And, and I see it all the time on, uh, when I post things on Instagram, on my Instagram account, um, which is just my first name and last name, but people reach out, they're like, oh my God, you know, I, I, I know I was there when I was here with my family and look, here's a picture of my child at the pumpkin patch, we can't wait to come back. Mm -hmm and it just keeps going and going and going, and that's wonderful. That really shows you that you've been able to create such a connection that people, when they're long gone, still think about that time when they were here at Aqualina. And they're not telling you that, oh, you know, I remember the carpet in my room is so beautiful. I <laughs> love that carpet so much. That's not what they're talking about. They're talking about the team members. They're talking about the service. They're talking about these wow moments. When they come in through the door and I give them a big hug to welcome them back, they're like, oh, is Simone still at breakfast? And is Glenda still at Costa Grill? They remember their names. That's when you know you've made an impression. We all have places that we go to very habitually, right? Human beings are very habitual. 
um, you have your favorite bar, your favorite restaurant. Why do you keep going back to that place time and time again? Because you like the service. You feel comfortable. You like it's a good location. Exactly. <laughs> Cheers said it best. Yes, where everybody knows your name. But that's exactly what it is. I even I get invited all over town all the time because of my profession. But I end up keep go I keep going back to the same places over and over again because people know you because they genuinely care for you because when you walk into a restaurant or a bar and somebody just flung their arms open and it's like, oh, where have you been the last two weeks? I missed you. <laughs> bartender, his favorite drink. And the bartender knows and makes it, and boom, it's already there. <sighs> How can you not, right? <laughs> it's just, and then, of course, then you almost feel guilty. Oh, it's been two weeks I haven't been back. Now. <laughs> 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 Gotta, go. Gotta go, exactly. <laughs> and it's the same thing here, too. I have people that emailing me and said, oh, I'm so sorry, I know we, we, we really meant to be back, but it just didn't work out. You know, <laughs> My wife fell, so we had to take her to the hospital, so we had to postpone it by another month, but don't worry, we're coming. And I'm like, okay, good, because I was really worried. <laughs> it's that kind of relationship. That's what you want, and that's what you ultimately are looking for. So now how do we get to that point? It's not really something you can teach or train. It's, it's like you have to instill that mentality. You have to give people a little taste of what it's like to do something great for someone and how that makes you feel inside. And I, I love getting gifts. Everyone loves receiving gifts, right? Mm -hmm. But would you believe me that I actually enjoy giving gifts more than I like receiving them? Yeah. Yeah. And I really do. It's actually true. If I can do something for someone that makes their life better or just gives them this <sighs> moment, why not? To me, it's the greatest gratification. And I think that's why many of us are in the business of hospitality, not to be subservient, but to serve because we enjoy serving. We love that. And you have to love it. You cannot, I cannot stand here and say all these things and then not do them. I have to live it. I have to lead by example, which is another quote that's thrown around all the time, right? Yeah, lead by example. Well, what does it mean? Lead by example means do, being con your own conviction. It needs to show in everything that you do. You know, I can I can tell everyone about the team how important this VCTA group is, and then just not show up for the whole week. They would all be like, "Okay, well, look at him. <laughs> yeah, he's talking a big game, but then he just disappears." No, I want to be here. I want I'm relishing this opportunity to to be able to even have a little bit of sliver of time so I can share a little bit with you and speak to you. And I know you have such a busy agenda and a busy day, but it's important to me. I, I care about you and I care about you having a great experience at Aqualina. And then maybe in the future remembering that what we do here is not just what we advertise, but it's actually, it's part of our culture. It's really part of who we are. And that doesn't mean that we don't make mistakes. We're not perfectionists. If things go wrong, yes. But when things go wrong, the question is, again, what do you do about it, right? How do you fix it? You know? What are the next things? There'll always be hiccups. There'll be people coming to Aqualina and we're just not a good fit for them because that's not the kind of property they're looking for. You know, they're looking for something that looks different, feels different, smells different. They don't want to be enveloped. They don't want to be loved the way we give love. And that's perfectly <laughs> fine. <laughs> not everyone needs to be loved that way. <laughs> Other hotels do it differently, and that's, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. So the question is, how do we figure out who's the best fit for Aqualina and then match them up, right? And those people that really want that, they will get that, and they will get so much more. And that's part of the reason why you know, these wonderful ladies and gentlemen keep selecting Aqualina time and time again is because we've developed a relationship over the course of time. And it's, it's almost, at this point, I, I, I would be hopeful to say it's a friendship already. You know, it's, it's gone that far, in my opinion. And, you know, with the newest gentlemen as part of the team, too, I even now already feel like we've definitely connected a lot more than just, you know, high and by, right? <laughs> he actually reached out to me today, too, and he was kind of writing about something, and as I was reading it, I immediately thought, here's an opportunity right there. And then I did something that I think he appreciated, and that's something else that's very important, too. We have this mantra here that the guest never works. That means the guests shouldn't have to think about things. They shouldn't have to move their chair. They shouldn't have to move their umbrella. They shouldn't have to think whether they're going to do next. We need to take care of that for them because in my opinion, that's ultra luxury, right? You're, you're trying to explore all these options for them already. And then what I always love the most when somebody says, you know what? Don't worry about it. 
I understand what you're looking for, leave it with me, I'll take care of it. And then actually do that too, not just say that, because many people say that and then nothing happens. And then you're even more disappointed. But you just take it off their plate and say, you know what, don't worry, I'll, I'll take care of it. I got this, go back and enjoy yourself. Makes all the difference, no? True? Yes. So we could have gone back and forth on email 15 more times, but what's the point? Right? I'm supposed to take care of things, so let me do it. Let me do what we do best here. So I just took it away from him and I said, focus on what you need to do. I got this. I can't say what it is, but someone in this room will experience that later today. So, with that being said... So I mean, you couldn't get the keys to it. <laughs> <laughs> <Where's that one>? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are driving me all around town tonight. <laughs> But so yeah, that's, that's a little bit of, uh, of what we do here, you know, and it, it really comes from the heart and, and it's my conviction that um, no one should be here that doesn't really truly enjoy uh, their, their craft and uh, it's not a job for me, it's not a job for most people that are here and I don't want anyone to be here that doesn't want to be here and I tell this to people straight up, I look at them and I say, if you don't want to be here, you don't be here. You wake up one day and you look in the mirror and say, you know what, that's not it anymore, don't come to work. Give me a resignation, leave, go. Do something else, because you're not doing justice to yourself, you're not doing justice to the organization, not to your coworkers, not to your friends, not to the guests, to no one. You need to be able to walk away from that. So that the people that are here that still want to do that, they get to do it, and they get to do it at the highest level. And that's another thing that's very important, which is consistency. We can deliver great service today and tomorrow, but if we don't do it on Saturdays or Sundays, it's a problem, <laughs> right? If your client comes here one time and they get blown out of the water, now we've raised the bar to here for them, and then next time they come and it's just eh, not, not acceptable. Can't be that way. Has to be consistently high. People that go to Disney World, never complain, right? You keep going time and time again, it's always amazing. Well, it's Disney. Well, it's because Disney is consistent. And they have a lot of measures in place, just like we do too, to make sure that we are consistent and do things really, really well, always. So we always want to make sure that we promise and deliver on that promise. You also don't want to overpromise and underdeliver. That's never good. Telling someone all the things that may happen when they may not, you're setting the wrong expectation. You don't want that. Sometimes we have construction happening. Like, you know, you saw it outside of Costa Grill. So what do we do? We call up our guests and tell them about it. And we're telling them what it is, where it is, what it sounds like, all of it. And then you make the decision. Do you want to come now or do you want to come later? I don't want anyone to walk in here on their well-deserved vacation that they have once a year, walk out there and say, well, nobody told me about it. We have to be honest and transparent. I think in our business that's very, very important. Because honesty is something you only get once. If you blow that, if you don't take care of that honesty, it will go away and it will go away forever, right? You can tie the knot back together, but there will always be a knot. It just doesn't work like that. So that honest relationship is very important. And people that have come here for years and years, they have very direct report. I mean, I'm very visible. I talk to everyone. They'll come up and tell me. He said, Christopher, you know what? The last 15 times it was great, but this time we're not getting the service here. Or this is not happening. I said, thank you so much for telling me. Let me take care of it. Let me fix it. Instead of them just walking away. Right? Saying nothing is worse than complaining, much worse. Or getting a review fifth, you know, five days later or ten days later you see this review and now it's like, oh, what do we do? Now it's way past when. So we try to check in with our customers very frequently. A check-in during the stay at least once or twice depending on the length and then a checkout too. To make sure that we don't just do what it is that they want us to do but also are they really happy with that? You know, is this exactly what you're looking for or maybe looking for something else? If I ask somebody, are you experiencing Aqualina? And they said, it's fine, or it's good. It's not good, <laughs> and it's not fine. It's never fine. If it's not, oh my God, I can't believe where we went yesterday, oh, we did this, or we did that, it's not good enough. <laughs> then something is wrong. And then I, sometimes you need to poke a little bit, and then you just kind of pull it out of them slowly, and then I, well, I didn't really want to complain, but. You know. I have this thing to I always say, if it's before the but doesn't count. You know. Have you ever heard people say something? <laughs> I really love you, but. No, then you don't really love me. <laughs> so listen carefully when people talk to you about things like that, and they always say all the things they say, and then they say, but. Everything before doesn't mean anything. <laughs> it's what's after the but. That's what's important. That's what's interesting, right? So we listen to our customers. We want to make sure that they are well taken care of. We communicate their preferences. What you give us, we share with everyone here at the team. Obviously, it remains confidential. 
um, but dietary restrictions, preferences, likes, dislikes, whatever it may be, the more you can give us, the better we can be set up for success to service your customer the way they want to be serviced, not the way we want to be serviced. And I, I continue to be accessible to you as well. I give everyone my business card and you have my contact information. Please make use of it. I mean it, honestly. I'll be more than happy to. I want to meet everybody. I want to greet everyone. If I can make an even bigger wow story out of it, why not? Let's do it. The other day we had a wonderful um, grandmother. She was here with her two uh, grandchildren. There were two boys. And uh, at breakfast, I, kinda, you know, I was walking by and I saw the Mickey Mouse pancakes. So I started talking to the boys about the pancakes. And then she says, you know, he's been watching your video and he's really into fashion, right? She's, I know it's weird. He's six years old, but he's really into fashion. <laughs> um, and he loves your shoes. <laughs> And I was wearing actually these exact same shoes. Yeah. She's like, he loves your shoes. So, <laughs> so I went back to him and I started talking. I said, so, you know, I heard you're into fashion. You really love the shoes? I was like, yeah. I said, yeah, take a look. You know, it's beautiful shoes. So we started talking about the shoes. And then I said, I said, you know, you're leaving tomorrow, but you know what? If you ever want to talk about fashion or you need some advice or you don't know which shoes to buy, I said, yeah, give him my card. And I said, here's my card. And that has my personal phone number on there. And you call me anytime you want. All right? And he was just, he was holding it up with both hands and, <laughs> and he showed it to his grandmother and he was like the proudest thing ever, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's something so small sometimes. And then later on she sent me a note, she said, you know, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend with my grandchild. Mm -hmm. It's just the time. It didn't have to be money or a, a, a present or anything particularly. It was just that. I have another great story too, a true story actually. It was yeah. a family. They are nice shoes, thank you. They were a gift. I did not buy them myself. They were a present. Uh, they are about 12 years old now, so that, again, you take care of things. They last you for a long yes. time, right? Shoes too. Um, it was another family. They had also two kids too, and they were staying with us for a week, and at the end of that week, I gave them, um, let's see if I have one with me right now. I may. Uh, we have our own little currency here at Aqualina internally, which we call Aqua Dollars. So these Aqua Dollars, which um, can be awarded to team members for excellent service. They basically look like this. And they have our service standards on the back and all the managers are usually carrying one so they can write it on the spot for instant gratification and then you can redeem these aqua dollars for uh, all sorts of different prizes, uh, movie tickets, cash, up to a hotel stay actually. So that's a nice little reward system that we have internally. And a few years back we actually introduced the uh, aqua coins too. Um, I thought I have one with me, I don't unfortunately, but it's basically a small little red coin and it has the A clover in it, and it says Aqualina around it, and it's written in gold, so it looks very cool. And four of these coins make up one dollar. <laughs> so I talked to these boys, and I, I, I happen to have two in my pocket, so I gave one of each to the boys, and I said, next time you come back on your vacation, you make sure you bring that, that coin, and if you do, I will go and buy ice cream for you. Oh. Right. And they take it, and they depart. Month and month and month and month go by. About a year later or so, they actually book a reservation. Now, I would be lying to you if I tell you that I actually remembered <laughs> this. I did not remember that. But when I saw them walking in at the arrival, I saw the boys, I immediately remembered. And she comes up to me and she says, can I talk to you for a second? I said, okay. So we kind of walk up to the side and then she said, you know, we were at home and they kept holding up this coin and then they gave it to me and said, Mom, take care of it, and I forgot it. <laughs> and if, 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 if I forgot it at home, they're going to kill me. So please, do you have two coins that you can give to me right now? <laughs> I said, sure. So I went back to the office, I got two to her, and then she basically was like, oh, remember the coins you gave me, boys? <laughs> <laughs> and she gave them both the coins back. And so they both came, like holding the coin up like this, like it was the most precious thing in the world. And I said, I'll make good on my promise, so let's go and get ice cream. So I picked them up and we went to the marketplace. They both got a big cone of ice cream and, um, and, you know, and they were just happy. Now just think about that, right? It was a small little plastic coin that kept them connected for a year, right? And it also reminds me, and this happens frequently, that the prime decision makers in a family are not the adults. <laughs> <laughs> we think it's the adults, I not the adults. They ask mom to go back. When, when are we going to go back to Aqualina? Yeah. 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 
a couple of weeks ago, I was on the, on the uh, patio outside and I talked to a guest and he said, you know, we really wanted to go to the Caribbean this year, but the kids insisted on coming back to Aquilina. So <laughs> there we go. I said, great. <laughs> the kids are the decision makers. Yeah, yeah. And if the parents are happy, you know, kids, I mean, if the kids are happy, the parents are happy, right? Yeah. So it, it works both ways. And we have so much that we do for children here, Aquamarine Kids Club and then all the experiences. Uh, plus the footprint also allows for parents to have a drink somewhere and just relax and watch their children pretty much in a 360 perimeter. You can see them on the beach, you can see them playing uh, basketball, you can see them playing foosball, you can see them on the water and you don't even have to leave your chair. It's all right there for you. So the kids are comfortable, the parents are happy, everyone wins. And if I'm, you know, if I'm a parent, I'm thinking, okay, where should we go next year? And I'm like, all right, I know they love this place. They'll take great care of the kids there. Um, they're really happy if we go there. They keep coming back. Mm -hmm. And we've seen kids grow up here. We've had, we've had couples that came um, for their honeymoon or for a, a romantic getaway. And then a year later, they came for a baby moon. And a year later, they came with the baby. And then a year later, the baby is walking. And then, you know, you kind of see them grow up. Mm -hmm. And having been here for eight years now, I've literally seen like, kids grow up. They keep coming back to Aqualina. And it just, it, it kind of really warms your heart. And those are the things I think that, that kind of set us apart and differentiate what we do here versus what everyone else out there is doing. Mm -hmm. And I will never ever talk bad about um, any of our competitors. They're all wonderful properties. I know a lot of the general managers too. To me, they're just different, that's all. Mm -hmm. And it is what you're looking for. You may find it here or you may find it somewhere else. And it's for us to find out you know, what's your favorite place. And then once you've settled on one, or you said Aquilina is my favorite place, now, now we step in and say, all right, how, how can we make this memorable? When I think back to being very, very little, I remember I grew up in Austria and we never really had any money, so our vacations was, we would go to Italy, which was only a two hour drive away, and we'd do camping there. And on this campground, um, we would always cook our own food, but then one time in the week, we would be able to go to the restaurant and have pizza there. And I still, to this day, remember the server, his name was Luca, who served us in that restaurant, not because of the food, but because he was so warm and genuine and funny and made us laugh. That's why we wanted to go back to that place. And I'm sure our parents were probably thinking the same, oh, you know, let's, let's go back to the same place because they really liked it there. But that's what people remember, it's the interactions more than the tangibles, more than the amenities, more than anything else that you can possibly do. It's when you are able to connect with someone and touch them on an emotional level, that's, that's when the real magic happens. And that's where you can, you can start creating unforgettable experiences. And they will be with you for a lifetime. Uh, I was probably seven years old, eight years old, when Luca served us. And I still to this day remember him. He probably has no idea that I talk about him all the time. <laughs> I have no idea what he's doing now. <coughs> but he was able to leave a memorable impression on me. So I'm hopeful that we were able to leave a memorable impression on you a little bit today as well. Yeah, and um, yeah. you know, and I appreciate you all being here. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again in the future and many of your guests as well. Thank you. Yeah, thank so you. thank you. <laughs>I'll, I'll buy you ice cream. You buy me ice cream. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. yes. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm sorry. Can yeah. we? I don't know. Do we have time? No. Do we have time for Q and A? No. Yeah. Jay says Any no. questions? <laughs> Any no. questions? Yes. <laughs> Ask questions. Please. One of the things that I want to know, and I thought about this when Laurel was talking as well. Yes. Because the theme is very, very clear here. Mm -hmm. And many of us have come from other careers. Yeah. We know people are the most important in hiring. Definitely. What is your hiring process like so that you get, and how does it differ from other kinds of hiring? I think uh, having gone through that myself in many different properties, I've never been able to talk to the general manager unless you have a person that direct report, directly reports to the general manager. Mm -hmm. At Aqualina, everyone gets to interview with me. Mm -hmm. So after they're gone through the initial stages of human resources, their department heads, I have once a week a panel interview where I meet everyone because I want to look into their eyes and see if the passion is really there. It's not about technicalities, it has nothing to do with that. I want to get to know you as a person, as a human being. And I also want you to have the opportunity to get to know me because this is not the first and last time we'll see each other. We'll see each other very frequently. <laughs> and I want to be able to set the pace from day one. Um, and that has proven very, very helpful 
Um, the other thing that we're doing also, we have something that's called the predictive index. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of it. Maybe some of you may have heard of it. It's basically, a, it's kind of like a personality questionnaire, a quiz. Very simple questions that just ask you, you know, about your, um, who you are as a person. And out of that, a, uh, a, a personality profile is generated. And that personality profile allows us to kind of look into the person a little more than you may want to reveal and kind of assess who you are and what you may be most suitable for. Uh, and that's something also that we've adopted about three years ago now and has worked very, very well. Um, we've also done it for our leaders too. And then we're furnishing basically each other with these profiles so we can also better lead and better manage too at the same time. Because again, it's all about understanding who the person is. And leading someone that you don't know will be very difficult. Uh, you want to get to know that person. So the recruitment process is very rigorous, it's very detailed, it's very lengthy. Because of this, this whole vetting that's happening, and then once you're here, we will heavily invest in you. So we want to make sure that that investment is really, there's an ROI for both of us. You know, success is a two-way street. I can give you all the tools, but if you don't use any of them, you'll be useless. Um, if you come and you're knocking our door, but we're not giving you anything, that's not working either. So the only way this works is if we're both on the same page. And that's what I want. I want to see the fire in their eyes, the hunger. I want them to tell me that when they wake up, they're excited about doing what they're doing. If I don't get that sense, I've, I've turned people away in the final stages. And then the leaders come and say, well, why did you turn them down? I really needed the front desk agent. I'm like, no, <laughs> sorry. If that means I have to go there and stand, I will. But I'm not going to allow someone in that is not a good fit for our culture, that doesn't embrace our values and ideals. That's like the ultimate gatekeeper. You know, it's once they're in, that's it. It's a different story. But at the gate, you still have that opportunity, and that's why it's a very rigorous process. And then the training process starts, and that's another one too. Very detailed, before anybody's even allowed on the floor. They have back of the house, heart of the house training. Um, there's checklists. There is, it's very systematic and organizationally driven. We have an amazing training and development manager, Jennifer Sternberg, who is just absolutely phenomenal. Also someone who lives and breathes the culture like there's no tomorrow. And that allows people uh, to really you know, immerse themselves and, and to be confident. And once they're on the floor, they have confidence. Um, and they're not scared anymore. And that's something that's very important. You don't want to put somebody in front of a, uh, a group of people, for example, have them give a speech about something they know nothing about. Right? Everyone would freak out. If I have to come in here and talk about quantum physics, I'd be like, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I would wing it, but <laughs> probably not very well. <laughs> But if somebody gives me a three-month tutorial on it, I'd probably be able to step in here and at least talk comfortably and confidently for a good five or 10 or 15 minutes about it. Um, so that's what we're doing. We're really focusing on how do we, who are the right people for our culture, and then once they're here, setting them up for success because their success becomes our success. And that's something else that's super important. We have so many rules and regulations. Uh, we have all these different rating agencies. We have Forbes, we have AAA, we have leading hotels of the world. They all have their own standards too, and it's probably about 450 in total, resort-wide, right? Which is a plethora of things. But those are just the framework. It's really the employee that paints the picture. And that picture painting is personality, and we don't alter personality. I don't want to influence personality. I want to emphasize and bring that personality out so you can shine the person that you are. I'm just making sure you're not coloring outside the lines and you stay within the frame. But the rest, that's how we connect to our guests, not because everyone is doing the exact same thing. It's because everyone is uniquely different. So you may connect with someone here and someone over there, but not these other five people. But if we were all to be the same personality profile, it, you wouldn't connect with anyone. Yeah. So that's kind of where it goes. And then every guest who leaves has their two or three favorites that they were able to build a connection based on preferences, likes, based on the similar interests. You know, he's a Dallas Cowboys fan. Oh, and so is our server outside at Costa Grill. Perfect, you know, you match them up. And then he thinks, oh, you're a fan of my team. L wh what can I do for you? I know they're playing on Sunday. You're here, so let me think about it. Oh, you can get a special cocktail and you get maybe a hat. Or a, and that kind of jogs their memory too. So helping them to really be themselves more than anything else has proven to be great, great, great success. Very good question, thank you. Any other questions? Anything else you'd like to know? Well, thank you very much again for allowing me to be here. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Christoph. And, and you know, again, they all heard, heard this kind of on the front end that we, you're such, it's, it's such a favorite place for, for us. 
uh, to come back year after year and feel like family and feel like we really have a, a very special connection here. You do. So we appreciate it. Definitely. Yeah. You always have a home here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. I will still okay. see you before you're heading out. I'm here today and I'm here tomorrow as well. So. Okay. And then you have all my contact information, so please make use of it. Okay. What's he trying to do? I can see him by the blink of my eye. Oh, he's going to un unplug you here. I was, uh, I was joking earlier. I said the last time somebody put one of these on me, I had to swear to say the truth and nothing but the truth. <laughs> it's a very different circumstance. <laughs> Enjoy your Great. Afternoon. Thanks, Christoph. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, what time have we got here? 3.30. <coughs> 30 minutes for the next one. Yeah. Believe it or not, there's, uh, there's some snacks back there. Okay? We ask that you go get them and just come back. Yeah. We really, we have another guest coming in at 4 and we want to be done. 